Senator Roberts. Thank you, Chair. Uh, and thank you, Mr. Uh, Dr. Parkinson, for appearing today, and congratulations on your imminent retirement. Included in other submissions is the term golden escalator, implying yes. a reward for past effort. In your inquiry and in preparing your report, did you inquire about this possibility? Sorry, Senator, what possibility? Well, the possibility that uh, Mr. Pine might be getting a luxurious employment contract based upon his past support of EY. Uh, I'm not aware that he has given past support to EY. I'm, sorry, Senator, I'm not, being I'm not being deliberately obtuse. I'm trying to work out. Um, do, are you asking, did I think he got the job because he had previously done something to the benefit of EY? No, I'm not asking for that opinion. Okay, I'm asking, you. did you inquire about that possibility? No. What is his salary with EY for two days' work each month? I have no idea, Senator. That's what I was getting at. Um, so you did not, you did not inquire as to the background, the details of his contract. It was not relevant, Senator. The question in front of me was: Was he in compliance with Clause Two Point Two Five? And if he and, had a very sorry, just let me finish. And frankly, whether he got one dollar or he got a hundred thousand dollars, the number is completely irrelevant. I don't care whether you got a one dollar. If he's breached two twenty-five, I would have called it out. If you got a hundred thousand dollars and he's breached two twenty-five, it is to me absolutely no difference. You either breached it or you haven't, and there was no evidence in front of me to suggest that he was he had breached it. I understand that line of reasoning, but at the same time, if he was given a, a very cushy contract because of past work with EY or past association with EY, that would mean he's in breach anyway. Did you inquire about that possibility? Uh, well, let's, sorry, let's st just step back for a minute. If he had um, done something for EY in the past, then I would have thought that would have been a matter for the parliament. Well, it is also a breach of the standards. It, it is, it, undoubtedly, but as we know, so my, there, my there, question are, there, really... are, there are parliamentary standards that if he breached those, that would be a matter for the parliament. But there was nothing, there was nothing to suggest to me that he had done a favour for EY. Uh, and, and frankly, these are questions best put to um, to Mr. Stewart or EY when uh, if they're being invited to attend. So I'm um, wondering, is your advice to the Prime Minister based on an inquiry that was not complete? No, my inquiry was complete. So let's go back to the context of a few years ago because it's relevant now. Are you aware of the controversy over Minister Andrew Robb's employment in 2016? Well, as you know, it's a matter of public record that I was asked to do an investigation of Mr Robb. And what was the conclusion and how was it done? The conclusion is in the, it's all on the public record. So what is that conclusion? It's on the public record that Mr Robb had not breached the ministerial standards. Yet and let, let, me, let me go back again, Senator. There is a difference here between um, the standards as they exist and the standards that people seem to want to be in place. Um, I'm responsible, when asked by the Prime Minister, to assess people's behaviour against the standards as they exist. I can't do anything more than that. I, and, and this so, is so not the me... law. I have no investigative powers, I have no legislative backing. I speak to ministers, I inquire, or former ministers, I inquire, I collect as much information as I can, um, and then I make a judgment based on, uh, on so that. Let, let me ask you one final question then. Uh, section 226 of the standards under yep. post-ministerial employment, I see it as vital that ministers shall ensure that their personal conduct is consistent with the dignity, reputation and integrity of the parliament. Did you assess this? Uh, well, um, no, I did not. Why not? Um, because I would think that uh, all members of the House of Representatives and the Senate might find it quite odd 
that I started making assessment of what was dignified behaviour on the part of parliamentarians. The Prime Minister asked you for advice, as I understand it, on the post-ministerial employment sections. Yes. And uh, to me, the pub test, which is quite commonly used now in yeah. Parliament, in uh, politics and in the media and in the, in the street, um, would indicate that, in fact, in the, uh, Mr Pine's behaviour in uh, taking this contract would affect Parliament's reputation in the eyes of the people. Yeah. Senator, um, I fully understand what you're saying, and if you note I am talking about an assessment against 225 and the standards. You're talking about the pub test. Um, I'm talking am, about 226, which yes, is part of post-ministerial employment. But, no, you're talking about the pub test. Um, post-ministerial employment is what if, I'm talking if about. You'd, if you allow me to finish, you're talking about the pub test. You use that terminology yourself. Um, it is quite clear that um, that those two things, if the pub test is what people wish, uh, that they may be different. In terms of me assessing whether their personal conduct is consistent with the dignity, reputation, integrity of the parliament, I really don't think you want me to start to speculate on um, issues around whether anybody's conduct is consistent with that. I think that's a matter for, um, for the parliament. Senator Lambie, 